anti-Trump agitators are at it again. <laughs> Violence erupted at another college campus last night, this time at New York University, where angry protesters lashed out against the appearance of a conservative speaker. At least 11 people were arrested. President Trump is not amused by the latest violence, treat, violence tweeting professional anarchists, thugs, and paid protesters are proving the point of the millions of people who voted to make America great again. Our lawmakers may be adding fuel to the fire. Nancy Pelosi is taking aim at Steve Bannon, the president's chief strategist. What's making America less safe is to have a white supremacist named to the National Security Council as a permanent member, it's a stunning thing that a white supremacist, Bannon, would be a permanent member of National Security Council. All right, uh, Kimberly, uh, I suppose the, using the word a white supremacist without uh, having proof beyond the fact that in, in their web page there were some white supremacists who wrote some things, but um, I don't like Bannon. I don't like any of them, but that's not the point. Well, that's he's not a white supremacist, and no. she shouldn't slander him by saying this. I mean, it's really conduct unbecoming. She has no proof to back that up, and it just shows the depths that they will go to to try to disparage someone and the desperation, really, of the liberals. And I'm so sorry, Bob, but uh, your party right now. Yeah, no. I just, <laughs> let me make this clear. I mean, feast Those your eyes on are Nancy not Pelosi. liberals. Wow. Those are anarchists who are many of them paid to do that kind of stuff. But we all get lumped together. All of us were out there. I wasn't out there breaking anything. Unless your window was around, I would have broken right, it. Right. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. To get a piece. Do you think that uh, this is <laughs> representative of the uh, anti-Trump? protest movement? No, it's definitely representative of, of the sentiment and the feeling. And what's amazing about what's going on is that so many people now um, on the left are so crazed by this sense of self-righteousness and moral indignation about what Trump is doing that they don't see the irony. So they are doing exactly what they accuse Trump of doing. So they call him a bully. What they're doing by shutting down speech is bullying. True. They call him intolerant. What is more intolerant than stopping someone speaking? They call him an authoritarian. The tactics that they're using are exactly that. They are literally doing the very things that they criticize Trump for. Now, if you're being political about it, um, in a way, I think this helps Republicans. Every time people see stuff like that, they think, I'm not with them, I'm with the normal people so that true. don't do that. But actually, I think it's really sad, and, and I think the, the really sad thing that I'm certainly experiencing on a daily basis is not, it's not so much the violent protests, it's the, it's the way that anyone who expresses any kind of understanding of or support for what Trump is doing, the conversation is closed down by everyone on the left. Yeah, I right. find that particularly, you'll remember this well, in the Bay Area, yes, like exactly. where I live now in, in, out in California. You can't say anything. You, know, you just don't want to even you, have you, the conversation. You a little careful. Terrifying remember, you we do. beat the hell out of you guys in 1776. <laughs> Let's go ahead. No, I, I mean, you talk about being out in San Francisco. So in the last hour, I was talking to a student at Berkeley who is the head of the Republican Party on the Berkeley campus. And I said to him, my goodness, you are walking around UC Berkeley self-identifying as a Republican? He said, yes, he is. It's terrifying that it's a small group, but that they, are, they don't even like to have their names out because they're afraid for their safety. But he says it feels like it's important that he stands up and has his voice heard. And what's amazing about that is it's rebellious. I mean, it, to be a conservative, I mean, it's, it's brave to go out there and be a conservative right. on the Berkeley campus. Like you were saying, the way the roles are reversed, I mean, they talk about fascism. That on the screen is fascism. When people are violently opposed to allowing other points of view, and if you don't word. join yeah. groupthink, and if you don't speak out like everyone else exactly the exact same way, that you face physical violence, and that's what's you going know, on. You know, that I bet that Republican Party at Berkeley is a, has five people on their roll. They, uh, they say they have a thousand, but and uh, well, I find that hard to believe, but that the people are afraid to have their names on there, and, you know, very few come out when they do something. And I that event was sold out, out Kennedy, the uh, when, when these things are run, and we've run this one now, Good work, producers. We've run this about four days in a row. Um, the, do you think this is fair to make this representative of the liberal anti-Trump protest movement? I think that's exactly what these uh, violent progressive leftists are doing. They're trying to make as much noise as possible so they can eclipse the news cycle. And that's the message they want to get across. And you have people like Gavin McInnes and Milo Yiannopoulos who go on to these college campuses and all they're doing is essentially taking the pacifier away from the baby, 
seeing if the baby will cry. The baby's going to cry every single time. That's the reaction they're going to get, and it plays completely into their hands. I mean, that's what they want because it proves their point that these college campuses where you have this sort of foment from the left have become so fascist, and as, as Steve points out rightly, it's laughable that they say they're from anti-fascist organizations, which is how they advertise themselves on Facebook to try and shut down the NYU event. You know, for some reason, Kenny, I'd, I'd hope for a different answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bob, you know the other thing that's going on here, the reason that it's getting all the attention is because there's a complete vacuum from the Democratic Party. They still haven't understood so I, I why they lost the election. They don't you. understand what the reason that all those people turned away from them in solidly blue states. They haven't done that thinking. It doesn't even look like... Look at what Nancy Pelosi said. To, yeah. Totally extreme. That kind of response is just not going to help them but get out of the not, hole there. You know, this is a situation where the party, my party, first of all, lacks a chairman. Not that it matters one way or another, but... The fact is that the base is moving, and the politicians in Washington are standing still and saying these outrageous things like Pelosi did, and I don't agree with that, but I, I tell you, it is not fair, in my view, to say that these are all fascists, they represent the liberal wing, or they represent liberal, progressive, anti-Trump people. Now, I happen to be an anti-Trump person to the absolute core. But I don't consider myself a fascist, and I don't consider myself an anarchist, uh, and, and I'm going to send George Soros back his check. The, the anarchist. Uh, uh, <laughs> let me know. Let me, Kimberly, let me ask you a question. What, do these people, I mean, why don't they get arrested is what I want to know. I mean, why? Yeah, in Berkeley. Right, well, because they're so afraid to do anything to enforce the law, and I worked as a prosecutor, you know, in the Bay Area in San Francisco and in Los Angeles, and as you know, you know, grew up in San Francisco, former first lady of San Francisco, and I saw this. I mean, we had protesters out in front of my house all the time when we did the care, not cash program, trying to give people services and housing instead of just handing them cash so they would become even more drug addicted and just continue to substance abuse. They lit sofas on fire in front of my house. They rang the doorbell all day and all night long until I had to threaten to go out there with the hose. But, you know, at the end of the day, they were disabused of the notion that that was a good idea. But if you allow and you coddle this type of foment, you're only going to make it worse. So when people have something to say at one of these universities, I admire them from being able to go forward and face those crowds. I had to go to Cornell after uh, Jesse Waters was kicked off yeah. the uh, campus and speak. I bet but that I, was fun. It was fun, um, but you know I was but treated this is, well. This is supposed good. to be the whole idea of college: is that you have somebody come on campus and speak that has an opposing point of view and that challenges your own thought. Right. Make sure that you really believe what you believe. Hear the other side. When you live in an echo chamber, you have no idea what yeah. the other side is you saying. Know, you, you don't you know. know. You'd be, you'd be surprised that sure. many of us wish that these people do speak and be allowed to speak because when they speak, people understand what it's about. When they understand what it's about, they understand that uh, authoritarianism sits on the other side with uh, Mr. Trump. Now, listen, did they get your shoes? They didn't get your shoes. No, they didn't manage to break okay, uh, through good. the perimeter. Yeah. That's get inside the, the, the house. They're closely <laughs> held, the, the yes. final inner yeah. chamber. Yeah, yeah, Kennedy good. didn't like that comment. Safe for him. No, but I, I do not like the, the idea of someone stealing Kimberly's shoes in the night. That is not okay. They might they're cut probably them more valuable than the house where they were living. They didn't have enough trucks to get there to get it done before dawn. Um, what, I, what I wanted to say about what Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, because what I find so offensive is there's only a couple of things you can tar people with now nowadays that, that really uh, malign and destroy their reputation. You can call them a racist or you can call them a pedophile. And what if Nancy Pelosi stood up in front of those cameras and claimed that because of an association that one of Donald Trump's advisors had with, I don't know, an, an alleged pedophile, that made that person a pedophile. That's essentially what she's saying with the white supremacist comment. And I think, uh, I think Steve Bannon has a claim. Yeah, but that's exactly I think he what you're all saying about I that when you say fascist. You're, you're saying that that means that the rest of us who no, but that's all, that's all, honestly, but that is all coming from the left. That kind, that kind of way of, of, of having a political argument is coming from the left. That's what's going on right that now. That is not and coming I think from the left. It, it is. And that I think is. It, and it's sad because it actually, think, you know, people protesting, people boycotting, that's all great. That's people getting involved in politics and democracy. We want to see more of that. But not when it's violent and not when it's so extreme that it's just distorting and smearing well, someone. You know, there were three exactly. million it's women. Okay. Three million men. Three million women in this country that went in one city or another and protested Trump 
Now they that did was it so peacefully, different. right? That, but but that was about people the, speaking. That, but see, that was people were allowed to talk. I mean, that's the main difference. So with the women's march, I mean, a lot of us saw it out in the streets. That was a lot of people that got organized. They came out. They had a message. They had signs. In some cases, they had costumes. I mean, this was Americans going out and having their voice heard, whether you agree with it or not. What we're seeing here is completely the opposite. It's shutting down speech. That's right, it's which shutting makes down marches. It is opposite of people and who are protesting. Yeah, it's 